Mr. Rossi. Miss Fowler. Were you, uh, were you in Miss McKenzie's room? Uh, yes, I was. May I ask why? I was just curious. Frankly, I uh, had a talk with Rodney Harrington. And he asked me some questions I didn't have any answers for. Well, none of us know that for the moment, eh? I'll be honest with that. Actually, I'm kind of glad you took the initiative. I wanted to talk to you about setting up a therapy program for Miss McKenzie. Well, isn't that a little premature? Well, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Fowler. There's no reason to keep you standing around. That's all right. Dr. Morton and I are concerned about Miss McKenzie's condition. Isn't she responding? No. The vital functions are fine, but uh, we noticed a slight rigidity over the left side of the body. That's why we wanted to start therapy right away. I don't know. I don't know what. How much good it'll do. Now. Well, we don't want to give the tissues a chance to atrophy from lack of use. Is this a 98.6? You've done this with other patients, Russ. What's the problem? Oh, no problem. Why the reluctance? We just set up a, a regular program, nothing elaborate. Just a, a passive range of motion exercises to all the limbs and frequent changes of the body position. Whatever you say, Doctor. Good. Now, you give this to Miss Choate. I'm sure she'll get you started. Thank you. I'm going in to talk to Judge Weber. Fine. I think we'd better keep Mr. Fowler company. Charlie, it's open and shut. The girl saw Harrington Thank throw... Thank your estimation, John. Just in time, as usual, Ted. I'd like to keep up with my worthy opponent. Good idea. Join the ranks, gentlemen. Please, John, continue. Your summations are always interesting, if not completely factual. Fact. Harrington was with Chernak when he died. Fact. There was an eyewitness to the murder. Fact. She saw Harrington throw a gaffing hook at Chernak. Excuse me, but when I did exactly what Harrington did, she said I threw it away. Well, that grandstand play netted you exactly zero. She knows what she saw, and you can't shake her on it. She's a very bright little girl. I thought she did very well on the witness stand, didn't you, Charlie? Objection. Leading the witness. <laughs> Sustained. Mr. Fowler, we can keep this hearing going for another two weeks. We have a platoon of psychiatrists waiting to tell you that your one and only witness is an emotionally disturbed little girl. Call them. I'm not afraid of your experts. They weren't on the wharf that night. You don't have to. One more day on the stand and her testimony will be as reliable as shaved dice. Are you saying she's lying? John, that statement you took is a glossary of leading questions. You asked her exactly what you wanted to know and nothing more. Gentlemen, if she's all the case you have here, you're not as slick as I thought you were. She's all the case I need right now. She couldn't hear what they were saying, John. And when Harrington threw the hook away, he said, I don't need this. That's what he says he said. That's in his statement. His voluntary statement. Gentlemen, please. I call this recess so I could review the testimony in peace and quiet. Well, have you reached some sort of decision, Charlie? Have you rested your case, John? Shall we to the grind, gentlemen? The court will rise. The court is now in session. Continue, Mr. Fowler. And Stella Chernak to the stand. Raise your right hand, please. 
Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name, please. Stella Chernick. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Stella Chernak happened. She said that Rodney said he was going to kill her brother. You represent me and my sons. You also represent Martin Payton. Martin Payton would do anything to destroy and punish me and my sons, and you know it. You've always known that. <laughs> 